Thank you, our three VIP guests, for the opening speech of our conference. And I believe that our meeting will be a complete success and uh, all of us will benefit a lot. Next, let's start our lecture time. Welcome our host of this session, Dr. Liu Cheng from Peking University, Sohan Hospital, China. Dr. Liu is the member of the Young Lecturer of International Aerospine. Welcome, Dr. Liu. Thanks. I have a change with uh, Professor Zheng Jiechen. Professor Zheng. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Liu. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, dear professors and colleagues, it's my great honor to attend the um, international UBE uh, academic meeting. So um, I'm Dr. Zheng from West China Hospital. So thank you very much for um, the company of Bones to sponsor this meeting. Uh, so let's begin our lectures. The first speaker is a world famous uh, UBE, the founder, Dr. Song from Korea. His topic is the pursuit of UBE. Welcome, Dr. Song. Uh, everyone, I will start. Uh, my topic is endoscopic uh, anatomy technique and pursuit of UV. You know that every kind of surgery technique has uh, their unique concepts. UV also, these eight concepts, you know that everyone, first uh, unilateral bipolar endoscope surgery, fluid medium surgery, triangulation, and the semi-tubular system. This is important because uh, open system in open surgery, but MED and PEL, the tubular system, but UV, please, can you hear? Yes, very clear. Okay, okay. Uh, this uh, UV has a semi-tubular system at working portal. This is very important. This figure is, uh, uh, this is a working portal. I, I always working with my assistant. Assistant take a semi-tubular retractor. This portal here, rigid portion and free portion. This is a semi-tubular sheet, important. Five, one hand surgery, lens inside, lens to be movable, not fixed, people movement. This is a UV concepts. Okay, this is a common, my operating field. Surgery, a sheet and scrub nurse here. This is the fluid medium surgery. So hydrostatic pressure is very important. My, I always control the by gravity height here. This is my head size. Also, this is, uh, I think, optimal of hydrostatic pressure in OP field is 32 PPT millimeter mercury. This height can change it, can change it maybe 32 50 millimeter mercury. This height may be 50 centimeters. So this is anatomy semi-tubular system. That means here I always separated the, these two small muscles is the multipedus. This is, I also, I this retractor, this through this retractor, I can use the instrument here. This one, semi-tubular system. Okay. Okay, this is semi-tubular tubular system. With the always, I use semi-tubular retractor. This is the key of minimal invasive surgery. Also, this is the tip of prevent the UV surgical complications. Okay, this is open surgery. I in open surgery, you have one or two freer. This is a nervous system. This is a sharp blunt. If you change the shape of change, this one very safe, but this is UV system. This working portal has a relatively slightly restricted. So I can change the angle of the angle of the instrument. This is safe, this is relatively dangerous. 
I always so I all I have also over six prior needed. Okay, the so this is the POD one day MRI after surgery. So this is a full decompression, remove the medial marginal SAP, but I I preserve deep layer. Also, there is no a little edema muscle. This hemorrhagic line. The pursuit of UV for very patient care, this below area, lamina to disc area, uh, last over past 100 years. Maybe neural decompression funeral correction is completely, nearly completely complete. But in present and future, I always try to make a minimal invasive cosmetic also spine health care in whole life, my patient. So it, the anatomy is important. The first important anatomy is multipedus. The, this multi, through multipedus, a traumatic pathway for minimal investors. And also, you know that multipedus is uh, one of the main core muscles. I always preserve the core muscle, especially multipedus second, Ligamento plavum, you know that ligamento plavum, one of the main compression factor also during my surgery, due ligamento plavum act as a dural protector. Finally, this is endoscopic procedure, so very small. The working space is very small, so bony landmark of the transverse traversion root is important. That means just below junction between upper for border of low lamina and medial marginal SAP is important. This is a big three anatomy. This is a multipedus, you know, that small muscle union, the man. I think you know that this is a multipedus triangle. The key issue in surgery, you be surgery to make less damage of multipedus. Then, okay. But in UV also, you can make a damage of multipedus on working portal due to repeated use of the instrument. So to the tip of less damage UV is multipedus is three. First, interfascular approach. Second, use of specialized semi-tubular retractor. So the early make through a, a working space. This is interfascular. This is below multipedus. This system is UV. First, interpascular, okay, important here. Medial margin of the low pedicle start to the initial target point obliquely. This separation, this motion, this motion is uh, to go the interpascular approach. Important thing, first. Uh, second, specialize the semi-tubular retractor. This small muscle of the multipedus, this retractor retract the upper small muscles. This means, yeah, first working lamina. This retractor retract the upper small muscles. Okay, so initial working space and true working space. You know that this figure, initial working space is the petty area of all lamina. Uh, maybe this is similar to acromial, acromial bursa in shoulder arthroscopy, but after removing the small bone here, you can make true working space damage here. This is midline, base of spinous process. Yeah, bone working. After drilling out small portion of bone lamina, you can make here true working space without soft tissue. Here, this. Okay, second is ligament problem. You know that this one, too. you know that ligament problem uh, composed of uh, multiple fibers, so two layers, deep layers, so partial layer. I always, this one here, you know that this one, 
this is a cranial board of the ligand problem. This is a guide to control lateral foramen. Also, this deep layer act as a protector during UV surgery. So this midline cleft can make in, can make the midline orientation. I always emphasize the importance of the ligament problems. Anatomy is important. This is the superficial layer here. Okay. Okay. Sometimes this the first figure is the uh, has a least stenosis after L after L four five decompression. That means here maybe in this case. In case of mild instability, disc protrusion cranially, high height gap between disc level and interlaminar space. In that case, I always cranial under more undercut, more cranial undercutting. Also, sometimes hemilaminectomy. So these two procedures prevent the least stenosis. Okay, the cranial margin of a dim layer, you, you know that uh, many patients has a degenerative change. Degenerative change can make central stenosis with foraminal stenosis combined. Okay, this case, uh, central stenosis with right foraminal stenosis, left standing ULBD with right contralateral foraminotomy. The cranial border of the ligament problem guide to control lateral foramen. This is important. So important anatomy, epidural anchoring ligament, ligament ventral to midline. Sometimes this is a cause of the unknown origin CS oozing, dojal midline. Okay. Some, okay. Uh, next, uh, midline cleft, I always emphasize the orientation. That means here, if you go to the jungle, if you have a, a definite landmark in jungle, you find out the, the destiny, but if you lost of the landmark, you you may be wondering, so this is UBE surgery also, also because here first, uh, before surgery, orientation important. Second, you can make the definite landmark. The first important landmark is the endoscopy view for orientation. The first base of spinal process also the insertion of rotator muscle. After then, some removing of the bone, midline cleft. Midline cleft is the second first important landmark. Superficial layer removed at first, okay, the mid here. This is lamina, this is superficial layer. After removing some bone of superficial layer of ligament problem, you, you have more wide working space here. This one. Okay, this is more wide for deep layer, uh, remove the last day because you do protect less epidural bleeding. Okay, second important landmark in this year, the upper border medial margin junction area, just below this area, you can find out the traversion route important. Okay, after lumbar bleeding control in UB, there are four groups above lamina, bone bleeding, epidural veins, interfascular area. Okay, the general bleeding control first, at first, focal bleeding control, next procedure, system control in, in general anesthesia below 100 millimeter mercury, hydrostatic pressure, local. If you cannot, cannot find out the focus of bleeding, just wait uh, four minutes, no problem. I also recommend the neutral position. This one here, above lamina, there are some artery, supply artery, two, four, eight, ten o'clock. If you have a bleeding condition, I always control the two, four, eight, ten o'clock with the RF device. This bone bleeding, you know that 
bone bleeding occur and cancellous bone. So base of spinous process lateral three point. Okay, I always apply the bone X. Also, the tip of bone working, smooth surface important. This is smooth, this is the rough, not good. Okay, epidural pain, also this cranially, cranial upper border, three point, midline, half two, uh, caudal, caudal, five point here, shoulder, axilla, midline, this five point, interpascular. This is the four groups. In cervical bleeding control in UB, so you know that there are two groups, anterior, posterior venous process. Posterior epidural venous process is important. Midline veins, lateral vein, especially lateral vein, lateral vein can make massive bleeding. This root, this order, all, always, always I control lateral veins with RF device this time. Okay. You know that my technique is a floating technique. This is a laminectomy with the sparing spinous process. How much lamina to be removed laterally? First of all, decompress second, control the severe epidural venous bleeding, especially lateral veins of posterior epidural venous. Okay, here, that means here, this side, right side, some lamina remnant, this is a completely resected lamina. I have big massive bleeding in this area. I recommend you some remnant, lamina remnant important, I think. Oh, this is a rotator muscle, also big landmark. Sometimes massive abdominal fluid concern in paraspinal approach. I always emphasize you the barrier against the abdominal cavity. Intertransversarius, sometimes anterior day of lumbar fascia, important. Of difference uh, is right and left stand. I always commonly left standing coach. This the the direction of instrument the parallel to multipedus. This one also, but this is the vertical to multipedus. Okay, I always standing left standing, but only one extension exception is the only stenosis with the left foraminal stenosis. I recommend you, this UBE make is a minimal invasive surgery. So I cannot, I want to preserve multipedus and muscles. Okay, difference is this right standing, left standing, right standing. Okay, this is the, this is the big issue from the origin or 100 years. Direct central decompression is a primitive, original, and everlasting surgical goal. Laminate first, both laminotomy, viral approach, cervical laminoplasty. Cervical laminoplasty, goal to stand in now, minimal, after minimal invasive surgery, now, your lumbar ULBT is a gold standard for central stenosis, sometimes the lumbar spinous process, Splitting laminoplasty. This surgery is the present the skills. Okay, this is the lumbar spinous process good procedure for preserving the muscles. This is the cervical laminoplasty, gold standard for multi level surgery. For this UV is the standard for lumbar central stenosis, but, but we we recognize unrecon there is the unrecognized factors. Lumbar spine is a large and big lamina, also not coded. I want to do perform the cervical thoracic lumbar spine. We must review the anatomy of spine in spine in cervical spine. Horizontal small spinous process and small thin lamina, narrow interlaminal space. But in thoracic spine, cold level spinous process, high low relative horizontal, middle and back down, relative small thin lamina. This cold level 
this is a lumbar ULBD. This uh, land in outside and my soft tissue inside the wild delta. But endoscopy UB, ULBD, he is a land inside the movable. This one, left side and right side. This is uh, endoscopy ULBD. Okay, next is uh, UB, cervical ULBD. Definition is the unilateral approach. Inter this level is code level, so interspinous area is a working space. This area, both laminotomy, both polarotomy. This one, preoperative possible. I can make full decompression through unilateral interspinous approach. Okay, also this U, UB laminectomy for multi level, the definition is unilateral approach. Laminectum with the spear in the tip of spinal process, both flavored. This patient has OPLN and OLP here. After surgery, full decompression in cervical OPLN, thoracic OLF also together. Okay, this UB is UB cervical parameterotomy. Land, anatom landmark is a full point low pedically important. Important thing is the real course of the root important. So also I always emphasize the cranio-lateral border of low pedicle, pedicleotome important. Here, this one, after some remove the upper border of the hemorrhoid, bony spur of the, this one, removed. Okay. Okay, I already, we, we summarized the V point. This is the paper for V point. V point is, you know, the V point is the bone drilling start uh, here, starting point. This is the above lamina, but important thing is the here, the, the entry of foramen is the here. I, I, I think the inner point point important after drilling cranial and caudal lamina, after lateral end of the ligament plavum, the junction between ligament plavum passage on here. This is landmark to measure how far to go laterally. Okay, this one here, lateral side cranial caudal, this is a point point. I can measure in pre-operative MRI here. This is a V point. I will remove, remove designed here, maybe 6.28 millimeter. This inner V point can make big good orientation to root to decompress to effectively also less damage passage joint. I V point important also. Here, inner point point is more important in think, I think. Uh, next is UB thoracic ULBD. He is a high, low thoracic, unilateral interspinous approach, laminectomy with sparing the tip of spinous process, just like cervical spine. But mid thoracic, this, you know that the here, disc and Interlamina space of height gap is very big. I go to the through translamina approach to remove oil common in this here keyhole surgery. I less interlamina approach. Oh, next is finally uh, UB decompression for thoracic hard disk. This thoracic hard very challenging case. This I always go to through translamina. This angle is important here. This also, Sorashi also code level to make working space is important. After removing both edge of bodies, this one, you have some, some working space to save. Okay, first to make working space after removing both edge of the removal, body, and this one, you can check the dura here. After push down the disc and bone spur, finally remove, this is my 
thoracic hard disc surgery. I will summarize this cervical ULBD, UBE, thoracic, so first single level unilateral interspinous multilevel laminectomy, floating technique, thoracic, high low sub spine, high low spine is just like cervical mid thoracic translamina, thoracic hard disc through transforaminal approach. This is the present surgical technique. I want to make full decompression, lumbar, UB, ULBD, cervical, UB, ULB, also thoracic, UB, ULBD. Okay, finally, I might show, now I'm trying to surgery the for adult degenerative scoliosis. This is my surgical technique. Okay, conclusion, paraspine muscle is very important for spine health care in whole life for your patient. Also, three, endoscopic anatomy, multipedal surgical plavum, only junction of low lamina in SAP essential. Okay, endoscopic central decompression can do everything. Okay, thank you everyone, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Song. Thank you for your wonderful speech. Uh, uh, if audience has some questions, please record it and we'll discuss uh, later. Um, or send the question to the room platform and give your email, we'll contact you. Let's welcome the next speaker, uh, Dr. Ang Mo Liang from Singapore. Welcome, Dr. Liang. Hello, hi, Dr. Chen. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, and can you see my screen? Uh, would you uh, share your screen? Yeah, I'm sharing. Can you see? Can you see my screen? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, let me start. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Ang Muliang from the. Kutik Pot Hospital in Singapore. I'm part of the orthopedic surgery department. And today I'm really honored to be able to share with everybody the role of UBE in lumbar spondylosis. And this in itself is a very controversial topic, even for non-UBE surgeons. Just a little background on where Singapore is. Singapore is an island that's at the south of Malaysia. It's a small, tiny island. My hospital is in the northern part of Singapore. This is a hospital with lots of greenery, and this is the place where I work. Going on to the talk itself, I have got no conflicts of interest to disclose. Today, I thought we will share two of my cases on lumbar spondylosis. And we want to talk about whether we decompress or whether we should fuse and decompress, and how UBE plays a role in this the management of this condition. I will then lastly go on to the limitations of UBE before I make my conclusion. This is my first case. This is a 70 years old lady who's a previous cook and has got a previous L45 facet injection for her back pain. She now comes to me with right-sided more than left gluteal pain. It's very severe pain and she has to flex, very typical of a spinal uh, stenosis. She has got no neurological deficits, and you can see that she has got four or five spondylolisthesis, theses, which is unstable on dynamic flexion extension views. At the L45, these MRI pictures, you can see that she has got severe canal stenosis. She has got facet fluid. Incidentally, at the level above, at the L3, 4, you can also see that there is also severe to uh, moderate to severe sort of stenosis. Before I tell you what I did to them, I'm going to go on to the next case as well. This is a 73-year-old male that's retired. Notably, he has got heart valve problems and retroviral disease. He is seeing me for bilateral thigh pain for the past one year, also severe in nature. He can only walk 5 to 10 minutes. He's got back pain and uh, no back pain, and he's got no neurological deficits. You can see that the amount of these theses is even greater for this gentleman at the level of 4-5. Again, 
quite a dramatic um, translation when we look at flexion extension views. These are his MRIs, very tight level kind of stenosis. And before I tell you what I do, uh, what, what my management for them is, I thought we would try and concentrate in the theme of today's talk on the spondylolisthesis, where the definition for such a condition is an anterior vertebral displacement without disruption of the past with degenerative changes associated with aging and graph. Radiographically, we see that there is a 3MN translation. In my practice, I use this guideline quite regularly um, from March, published in Spine 2016. The recommendation was for symptomatic single level degenerative spondylolisthesis that is of low grade of less than 20% translation without foraminal stenosis, a decompression alone with preservation of midline structures provides equivalent outcomes compared to surgical decompression and this received a great recommendation of grade B. Noting that this was published in 2016, I looked up more literature in recent years, this year and last year, meta-analysis that proposes um, decompression. You can see they have looked at six randomized controlled trials. This was from UK Adil Fattah, and she reported, uh, uh, this, uh, this author reported that the decompression alone was not inferior to fusion in elderly patients and that it carries a lower risk of hospital complications, fewer adverse events, but we need to know about the increased risk of progression of spondylolis disease. Similarly, Dr. Wu, in his paper, he showed that decompression with fusion was not, to be, not superior than decompression alone. When I looked into these studies, we noticed that these studies are fairly long ago and within these procedures, decompression mainly refers to open laminectomy and at most it included one microscopic endoscopic decompression. What this means for us is given over the last 10 years that UBE has become increasingly popular, I suspect that with this community, we are able to show a greater difference between decompression for those patients who do not require a fusion. At the same time, there are also authors proposing uh, fusion surgeries. For example, the Indonesian author, Pranata, he collected about 4,000 uh, patients from 13 studies that he looked at, three randomized trials, six prospective and four retrospective trials. These are the trials that he looked at, they are multi-center, and he concluded that decompression with fusion had greater efficacy than decompression alone. And this, however, fusion was associated with more blood loss, longer surgery, and hospitalization. Interesting to me was in terms of complications, he did recommend decompression alone for younger patients when they try to stratify their results. And you will see for the premier analysis here, they have found in, in, uh, that decompression with fusion yield better pain, uh, leg pain improvement, and greater ODI scores. Across the board, even in their subgroup analysis from the grade one, these disease, and single level surgery, that they have got uh, decompression being superior in terms of duration of surgery, blood loss, and long length of stay. What all this really means to me is that at this point in time, decompression versus decompression and fusion still remains very controversial. But remembering that Hofstetter, he published and introduced this concept of the benefit zone of an endoscopic surgery. And just now, specific to lumbar spondylolisthesis, we talked about decompression. And this is where the benefits of endoscopic a surgery may really show its benefits. He pulled out several studies that we all commonly uh, are familiar with, the SLIP trial, the Swedish spinal stenosis study, and the SPOT trial, where complication rates are very much higher than that reported uh, on endoscopic surgeries. Utilizing this, we know that in UBE, just as uh, Dr. Son has shared so far, the principles that we use on reduced muscle dissection helps to prevent muscle atrophy. The magnified views allow us to 
achieve this decompression with low risk of damage to neural structures. And this view allows us to even decompress the contralateral traversing routes well. The irrigation also helps to reduce the risk of infection. With these principles, UBE stands in very good position to achieve a good outcome for patients with spondylolisthesis. And we'll take a look at that later. Specific to spinal stenosis evidence with a UBE, you will see that in the various outcomes in terms of back pain, leg pain, operative time, they seem to be similar compared to that of microendoscopic surgery or microdiscectomy. Uh, and this was also similar to that of the uniportal endoscopy. Hospital stay for UBE was lesser by three days compared to that of a microscopic. What is significant to me is dural expansion, that this UBE was able to achieve similar dural expansion compared to microscopic surgery, and it was better than uniportal surgeries. Facet preservation was better for UBE. Also, compared to microendoscopic surgery, in terms of segmental instability, UBE also was better at 0.9% versus 2.9% at 12 months. Certainly, when we look at these papers, these are some of the tables that I've drawn out for illustration where the length of stay by portal endoscopic surgery compared to micros, a microsurgery was better. And in terms of the bony resection, UBE had lesser areas of bony resection compared to microendoscopic surgery. In terms of facet preservation, UBE was also found to have greater facet preservation. One of the things that the authors uh, postulate from this Japanese paper was how the tube may have a limiting tube, but in UBE, there's a high flexibility of maneuvering the instruments as uh, Dr. Son has demonstrated earlier just now. And when we compare group, the micro, uh, microscopy group, biportal endoscopy group versus the uniportal endoscopy group, again, we want to look at the amount of decompression we're achieving with dural expansion by portal very similar to microscopic uh, decompre uh, decompression and superior to that of uniportal. In terms of back pain, by portal was able to achieve fairly similar day one post-operative back pain scores compared to uniportal and these two were superior to the microscopy group. We then now move on. What are the, the other aspects of decompression and fusion with UBE? There are three studies that I picked out here where they made direct comparisons in case control studies from 20, uh, 2019, in which UBE lumbar interbody fusion was compared to posterior lumbar interbody fusion. UBE uh, fusion, uh, comparing that with MIST lift. Finally, UBE. Uh, ULIF versus MIST lift in the latest uh, uh, publication. Um, and these were the numbers of uh, patients that are being uh, quoted. Similarly, we find that back pain for those who underwent decompression fusion with UBE compared to P lift or T lift was better. And this uh, back pain uh, in uh, superiority in terms of uh, VAS score lasted up to three months post operatively. Leg pain was similar in both groups. Operative time maybe la uh, longer in UBE. Hospital stay was lesser. Complications was similar. Transfusion rates were lower in UBE and fusion rates were fairly similar, except that perhaps there may be a lower rate of definite uh, great bony fusion at one year. When we deep dive into these various studies, ULIF versus PLIF, you can see that the operative time for ULIF was longer, statistically significant. However, also transfusion was significantly lower. This particular study looked at also the back pain score, which we mentioned just now, where in the early post-operative period, the VAS score for back pain was significantly better for ULIF compared to PLIF. Complication rates were similar, you will see on this table. And this is where at one year, in terms of definite rate of fusion, it would seem that perhaps 
in Yulia, this seems to be a bit lesser, but eventually this, um, uh, these patients uh, did well. When we compare um, biportal uh, endoscopic uh, fusion versus that of uh, MIS T lift, we see that the improvement in back pain score. This particular study showed that it sustained up to two months post-operatively. Also, in time to ambulation, those who underwent UBE fusion walked earlier, had a shorter length of stay. Finally, these results, when compared across time, the better back pain score reduction was better with the new lift up to three months, but they became fairly similar at six to 12 months. In terms of technical tips, uh, in this particular paper, the portal positions were important to be considered. You will see here on the picture on the right-hand side that the portals for the interlaminar decompression, they were fairly medial to the pedicle, between the pedicle and that of the midline spinous processes. While for that, for the fusion surgeries that were at the level of pedicle, or for the transforminal surgeries, they were cited further away. And in the principle of decompression, must make sure that there is sufficient CP and uh, resection or fusion and adequate and plate preparation. So now that we have looked at the various evidence, I like to just share what, what happened to my patient. This was the first case, the lady. Um, and you will see here that I've uh, used two needles to demarcate where I would put my portals. I confirm my position that I'm on the correct laterality at the correct level. I was able to achieve pedicle to pedicle decompression. These were the post-operative MRIs. These was the proximal level. These are the uh, levels of the uh, symptoms at the L4-5 level. Comparing directly L4-5 pre-operative and post-operative, you can see that the dual expansion was great. Um, I, I did not put a drain in my patients, and so you can see that there is still significant amount of fluid uh, on these MRIs. For the second case, the gentleman with a retroviral disease, the, I marked similarly these portals, and this would suggest that I did just a decompression rather than a fusion. I usually confirm my position of my uh, to localize where I was operating on, again, able to achieve pedicle to pedicle decompression. These were the post-operative MRIs. I did this very early on in my career. And you will see here that perhaps I could have undercut more of the lamina of uh, L uh, in, in the proximal region so that I was able to achieve a greater decompression here. But in both cases, the patient did very well. Um, they had uh, this resolution of their symptoms and they had no back pain. These was direct uh, for um, pre-op and post-operative uh, MRI images with adequate uh, decompression of the tickle sac. Overall, while, while we talk about the advantages of UBE, um, it is important to bear in mind that uh, um, at this point in time, Recognizing that challenges uh, may face UBE for uh, uh, surgeons who are starting out in terms of high-grade spondylolisthesis for uh, deformity and scoliosis correction, and the efficiency of surgery for multi-level surgery. Fusion also has several concerns due to the uh, uh, the autograph uh, availability since we are, we are not taking away the spinous process and the general complications associated with the uh, spine endoscopy. I wish to uh, end off by uh, going through some take-home messages that the clinical assessment for patient with spondylolisthesis disease is critically important in the decision-making process. And as with the current clinical guidelines, low-grade spondylolisthesis disease may benefit from decompression alone. There is evidence for both decompression and decompression versus fusion, but they remain inconclusive even at this point. UBE has advantages in, in addressing symptomatic spondylitis disease compared to open surgeries by even lowering the complication rates uh, associated with the traditional open sort of surgery. And even then, with uh, fusion surgeries, uh, ULIF also has been demonstrated to have several advantages. 
Bearing in mind the advantages that UBE can offer, it is important as surgeons to remain wise and prudent on the limitations of UBE. Long-term results definitely is desired for our patients with uh, spondylolisthesis. disease disease. I therefore end my talk and uh, thank you all for paying, giving me this time to share. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ang. Uh, thank you for a wonderful speech. So, uh, discuss after uh, the lecture. So, let's move to the uh, next speaker, um, Professor Yu Kei from Beijing. So, his topic is uh, very um, interesting about the pedicle screw incision assistant with um, UBE. Welcome, Professor Yu. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, thank you for Dr. Zhen's introduction. Uh, and uh, dear chairman, uh, dear colleagues, and uh, respected uh, Dr. Sun, uh, it's my great honor to be here to have this topic. I will talk about how I do it, pedicle screw insertion assist with bipodal endoscope technique. So the background, nowadays, we can perform decompression and amber in the body fusion with endoscope, either by unipotal or bipotal technique. So is it feasible to do all the procedure, include decompression, fusion, and the pedicle screw insertion by bipotal endoscope technique? To all knowledge, no previous study reports the pedicle screw insertion assisted with bipotal endoscope uh, technique. So uh, my contents include three parts. The first one is description of this technique, and the second one is relevant to surgical anatomy, and the pro third part is pros and cons of this technique. So I would like, uh, I prefer to do uh, longitudinal incision, uh, but I do think the transverse uh, incision can work as well. So let me introduce you, uh, for example, is uh, L45, uh, decompression and in the body fusion through uh, left uh, left side approach. So uh, I will, as you will, I will use two portal, uh, uh, which is located the lateral uh, side, the lateral margin of the two pedicles, uh, the uh, A and B incision uh, for decompression and in the body fusion, and. Uh, uh, but uh, I still I will need an additional additional uh, cube bottle, which is uh, lateral to the those two uh, incision two to three meters uh, centimeters, and uh, after we decompress and uh, uh, finish the in the body fusion, so we can easily uh, do the uh, guide wire uh, insertion and the pedicle screw insertion through the B portal uh, because we can. Uh, Feel or pal palpate the uh, inner wall or and the superior wall of the lower pedicle, L5 pedicle. So I will introduce later. And uh, if we do the L4 uh, pedicle screw left, left side, so now we use a portal uh, as a, a, a scope scope uh, scope portal, the Q portal for working to find the landmark. Uh, for the entry point of the pedicle screw. And, and after we find the entry point, we, uh, we need to uh, exchange the portal. So now we uh, change the uh, A portal as walking and the Q portal as a scope, for scope. So we put, finally put the L5, L, uh, the L4 pedicle screw on the left side. So as the, for the right side, it's a very similar technique. Uh, usually, is uh, the right, uh, right side we use uh, upper portal for walking and the lower portal for scope because I'm a right-handed uh, surgeon. So the area should uh, uh, expose for in screw incision is very limited. It only include uh, the lower part for the red line, the lower part of the SAP, and the base of the TP. So very limited uh, exposure. So the first step will be expose the lateral margin of the SAP. 
and the uh, memory process, uh, which is the lowest part of SAP. So, uh, and the, sec the second step is expose the accessory process and the base of the uh, TP. In the step three, uh, we can expose uh, the uh, two crest, uh, which is uh, accessory process and the lateral margin of the isthmus. Uh, we we uh, the top of the, those two uh, crest we can find uh, under X and the scope uh, and uh, step four uh, the entry point is uh, uh, for the pair of screws is the intersection point of the chance line of the top of the two crest and the vertical line of the lateral margin of the top of the accessory uh, process. So this is two line. So we have three tactics for uh, particle screw insertion. Number one is we can direct a screw insertion by palpation of particle wall. And uh, number two, uh, we can adjust uh, GMCD needle and the direct wheel. When uh, the first uh, position is not perfect, we can adjust uh, the GMCD ne needle precisely uh, under, uh, under, under the scope. Uh, number three is uh, we can use a freehand technique according to uh, anatomy landmark under the scope. So I will first, I will introduce the caudal screw insertion after decompression in the body fusion. So this is after uh, the compression and the body fusion. Now we can use the nerve hook to touch the medial wall and the superior wall of the uh, lower pedicle line. For example, L5 pedicle, and we can find the entry point. Now we expose more, and now we use the GMCD needle with a good direction. And uh, now we, we will, uh, uh, after this procedure, we will check with the CRM. And uh, usually it's okay uh, for first time, but if the position is not so, so, so perfect, we can adjust uh, uh, very precisely, like, uh, 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 like lateral for two uh, millimeter or upper for two, uh, one millimeter. It's very easy under endoscope. Uh, this video, I will show you the left uh, L4 uh, pedicle screw insertion, uh, like as I showed uh, in the slide before. First, expose uh, uh, the, the initial uh, working space. The initial space. Initial space is from the uh, lateral margin of the SAP and also lowest part of the SAP. So here, we can see the memory uh, process. Very, very clear. And now we can feel the force between the two crests, the accessory of the uh, process and the little margin of the isthmus. Here is the accessory uh, process. And also here is the base of the uh, TP, the transverse process. So under the scope, this uh, landmark is very clear. Now we use uh, uh, diamond bar to enlarge our working space. And also for some uh, very degenerated uh, 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 SAP, we, we decortical uh, decortic the entry point for, uh, for the uh, easier uh, entry of the uh, or or the probe. So decortical, we use the bur and also enlarge the uh, working space. Now we use the uh, all to make a landmark. This is all, is in the very, we are very familiar with uh, the, those uh, open surgery. After we uh, make the, this landmark, we can easily find the under the endoscope. And now I put the guide wire through this landmark. Now, as I told before, this is uh, uh, the A portal, upper portal uh, for uh, 
uh, scope and the, the Q portal, the lower portal is for working. So I, I, if I want to put the pedal screw, I want to change the portal because a portal for for final uh, screw uh, insertion. So I change the exchange the portal, so I can see the guideline, so I can find the landmark very easy. And then I will use uh, this uh, uh, landmark and uh, I will uh, make X3 uh, CM. So if, if the uh, position is good, I use the probe to make the canal for screw insertion. Now you can see very clear the 25 millimeter and the 30 and the 40, that's enough. And uh, after you use the probe, you can feel, you, you can touch the mid, uh, the, the four, four, the medial wall or inner wall or uh, lower wall of the canal to, to make sure the, there is a very, very good uh, position. Uh, no, no breach out of the, uh, the, the screw uh, trajectory. So we let, let's review the landmark for pedicle screw insertion. Uh, this is an accessory process here. And uh, here you, we, we expose the base of the uh, transverse process. So we can, we can see the lower margin of the TP. And also we can feel the upper margin of the TP. So it's very easy uh, when you are good uh, uh, open surgery uh, spine surgeon. So you are very familiar with this, uh, those uh, landmarks. And uh, here uh, we can expose the memory process. This is a working space. And there was a transfer, the accessory process based on the uh, TP. And the, this is a little margin of the isthmus. So here is a two crest. The top of the crest. So we, we made a, a transfer line. And uh, this here, we can use the longitudinal line of the accessory process. The top of the, also the top of the accessory process. Here is the entry point. Maybe is a 10, 10 to uh, 20 degree uh, cl climation. So a case example. Uh, this is a 47 year old female. The diagnosis is a lumbar spinal stenosis or L45, and also lumbar instability, L5 uh, secularization. This patient had back pain and leg pain for seven months uh, with intermittent claudication, which failed. Uh, uh, after conservative treatment. The left side is more severe than the right side. And the patient, the MI showed the uh, lateral recess uh, uh, stenosis of both sides and the uh, left side uh, foraminal stenosis and a little bit of central spinal stenosis. So I, we need uh, uh, both sides decompression. So I do the decompression and uh, interbital fusion, UOBD. So this uh, picture is uh, we, uh, after uh, we uh, finished uh, uh, the uh, decompression and the interbital fusion, here is the X-ray of the probe. You can see the probe is a good position. So you can, if you are very experienced uh, surgeon, you, you just uh, uh, through uh, this, uh, this view, you can make the, uh, the, the screw canal very easy without, uh, uh, without uh, any more uh, radiation X-ray. Here is uh, uh, the, for the L4, L4 pedicle screw insertion and uh, the right side uh, to pedicle screw all by, uh, all under endoscope. Here is uh, the incision like this way. So usually we can make a, a smaller incision than traditional percutaneous uh, uh, pedicle screw insertion. Because we can see, we can see the tap, we can tap, tap the, uh, connect, uh, the, the, the entry point 
and uh, yeah. we can see the tip and the bottom of the tap, and also we can uh, press the screw uh, uh, all under under scope. We we don't we no we don't need the uh, the CRM X ray anymore when you find the position is good. So less radiation. So the, here is a final uh, X ray after operation, and the patient the, the symptom uh, recovered very well, and the position of the pelvic screw is uh, is good. So in so this uh, the pros and the cons of this technique. Uh, this technique, as I showed uh, in the slides, is a very uh, it's a minimal invasive uh, way. It's a very limited uh, exposure, uh, very uh, little breathing, and uh, uh, under endoscope we can easily to find, identify the landmark for the pedicle screw, the entry point of the uh, pedicle screw. There is a less radiation exposure. And if the first place, first position is not so good, we can adjust the GMC needle uh, on the direct uh, vision. We can feel the screw uh, canal intact or not by a uh, ball tape uh, filler, uh, which is very similar to uh, open surgery. We can tap and insert screw uh, on the direct vision we don't need uh, uh, the, the, to make the position any any more for X-ray, and also we can put uh, not a cannulated uh, screw as well. We can use the common screw uh, screw, but uh, if we 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 may may need a uh, new uh, design because we need a long uh, tail for for load insertion. And uh, compared to the uh, navigation or robotic uh, surgery technique, this is a very less expenditure. But the, so, still, this uh, technique has some uh, disadvantages. Uh, it needs an uh, additional cube bottle. It still has uh, some learning curve. And nowadays, uh, I have only performed uh, five cases. There is a very limited uh, data, and we need uh, more study. So in the conclusion, so uh, it's an early uh, uh, study. So now we can say it is feasible to do all the procedure, include the decompression, fusion, and the pedicle screw insertion by bipotal endoscope uh, technique. And it is safe and easy to learn to insert the pedicle screw monitoring by the bipotal endoscope uh, technique. So I will thank uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Zhang Jianguo and uh, Dr. Sun Quan, Dr. Su Chuming as well to help me to uh, accomplish this work. So thank you for your attention.